Good afternoon and welcome everyone to this month's virtual flash talk at the Kelsey Museum. Um, normally our flash talks are about 15 minute Zoom lectures followed by 15 minutes of Q&A. Um, we are so excited for the month of June. The Kelsey Museum is partnering with the staff at Mathai Botanical Gardens and Nichols Arboretum to conduct this virtual flash talk. Um, the Bonsai and Penjing Garden at Mathai Botanical Gardens turns 10 this year and welcomes additional specimens to its ranks of nationally and internationally renowned trees. So this flash talk will explore how this collection has grown and changed over time and the relevance of bonsai in an academic institution now and moving forward. I want to welcome our speaker today, Carmen Leskovianski. Carmen has a degree in horticulture from Michigan State University. She has worked at Mathai since 2009 and has cared for the bonsai collection since 2011. Welcome, Carmen. Thanks so much, Stephanie. Um, I am really excited to be here. And I was um, thinking to myself as I was making this presentation, um, oh man, I hope I can fill 15 whole minutes talking. And then I thought to myself, mm, hopefully you can stop talking after 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try to keep it uh, kind of brief here, um, but I'm excited to hear what kind of questions everybody has at the end. Um, so yeah, my name is Carmen Laskovianski. I work um, with uh, Mathai Botanical Gardens, caring for their bonsai collection. And um, I currently actually am in Portland, Oregon, doing an apprenticeship with a professional bonsai artist named <clears throat> Michael Hagedorn. Um, but I, I still uh, work with the university, maintain that collect that connection, and I will be back in town um, just in a couple of weeks to celebrate our, our 10 year anniversary. So uh, let's jump in and um, there we go. So just to kind of start, what is bonsai? That's um, probably the, the first question uh, to answer here because not everybody knows what bonsai is. So um, bonsai is uh, literally defined, um, the, the Japanese characters translate directly into uh, a dish or container and um, plant. So it, it means, <clears throat> excuse me, a plant purposefully put into a container. Um, <clears throat> and often these containers are small. Um, this was originally developed in China over a thousand years ago, and it's been redeveloped since in Japan um, <clears throat> under the influence of uh, Japanese Zen Buddhism. Now, bonsai, uh, it's not a specialized species or kind of plant. Bonsai can be any woody plant, any shrubby plant that is grown in a pot using uh, techniques and tools that miniaturize it over time. So for example, the azalea in this photo, if it were to be planted into a garden and left alone without any bonsai care, it would eventually turn into a normal sized azalea shrub. Uh, let's see here. Bonsai is a mixture of art and science. So art in the way that the trees are shaped and designed, science in the way of horticulture, um, how you grow the tree, how you fertilize the tree, how you water the tree, uh, how you get these the tree to respond to um, stresses that you put on it. Uh, when you prune a tree, right, the plant will have a physiological response to that. So knowing the science behind a plant and having the art skills to create a pleasing design. There are a number of specialized tools and techniques that we use to shape these plants. You can see some of the tools here. We have a variety of saws, a variety of scissors, wire cutters, pliers, tweezers, all of these specially crafted, often by hand in Japan. Um, you know, there's other places now making these tools as well, but uh, these all originated uh, in, in Japan. Um, to, to do the very specialized work. There's a, a specific company even that will custom make tools if you have a specific need. What's the point of bonsai? Okay. So bonsai tells a story um, of, of the tree. So it can tell the story of where the tree came from, the time the tree uh, is from, um, the time of year, all of these different things come together to create this kind of story around the tree. So 
So as I mentioned, uh, bonsai was originally developed in China, then under the, the influence of Zen Buddhism, uh, changed in Japan, um, and has been around for well over a thousand years. You can see some of them are pictured in this uh, scroll here. So in the early 1900s, or sorry, the late 1800s, bonsai was introduced into the United States uh, during the Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. That was in 1876. Um, but bonsai didn't really become popular until after World War II, when all the American servicemen and women had come home. They'd seen bonsai abroad, and they became really interested in, in what this is. Uh, this photo here actually is one of our, our bonsai volunteers. He's the second one in from the right. Um, he's one of our bonsai volunteers who discovered bonsai when he was stationed overseas. I think this was during the, the Korean War. And so since then, it's really become um, a worldwide art. It seems as though all of the countries that have adopted bonsai as an art form have their own style. They use their own native species. Uh, but you know, everybody uses Japanese techniques, Japanese traditions, and a lot of times Japanese species as well. So let's talk about our collection. Our collection uh, came to the university back in the late 1970s. It was originally donated uh, by Dr. Maurice Siever, who was a, the director of pharmacology here at U of M. And it was cared for by members of the Ann Arbor Bonsai Society and uh, Botanical Garden staff. So you can see in the top three photos here um, where they were originally grown outdoors between our greenhouses. The second photo is one of our older conservatory displays back towards when I started um, in the, so this was put up, I think in the nineties through about 2010. Um, that display then changed into the, the last photo there you see on the right of, you know, a new bench. Um, and the display in the conservatory is now totally different. We didn't have an outdoor display until 2010. So that's that bottom photo. You can see when our garden was originally being designed um, and opened in May of 2010. And so this year we are celebrating the 10 year anniversary of this garden. So we've had trees since you know, um, the 1970s, but really our collection has started to grow and change uh, in 2010 and beyond. So once our garden opened, we had a, a very, very generous donor, Dr. Melvin Goldstein, who's um, a professor at Case Western University in Ohio. He's a, a private collector of bonsai, specifically azaleas. You can see some of them here. He has, uh, he's an alum of the University of Michigan and he's very generously donated his collection to us. We currently have um, about 120 trees in the collection. 33 of them are azaleas that just arrived a couple days ago from Dr. Goldstein's house. Uh, so we still have a number of trees uh, to add to the collection over the next year or two, um, but we do have a good, a significant portion of those trees, particularly the large azaleas right now. And the garden's continuing to grow and change to accommodate some of these trees. We've got new benches. Um, we're putting in a new cold storage facility for you know some azalea care. Uh, lots of lots of very exciting things happening. And so these trees do bloom. Uh, we're just about to hop into bloom season here. I think uh, we reported our first bloom earlier this week um, in the garden. And so the trees are starting. And throughout the month of June, very similar to how our peony garden blooms, you'll see these azaleas kind of coming and going in bloom. So bonsai in academia, where does this fit in? Um, I think a lot of times we think of bonsai as, you know, a, a foreign art form um, or, or maybe just as some kind of art rather than necessarily a learning tool. But in the years that I've spent working with these trees and studying these trees, um, I have met a number of people from a number of different disciplines who are interested in bonsai and who have very unique perspectives and, um, and ideas of how bonsai can be understood. So I've worked with engineers and architects and um, plant scientists and 
doctors, uh, all of these people who have this very deep interest in bonsai and see them in very different ways. And so I think bonsai in academia has, um, we have this huge opportunity here because we are one of the only research institutions in the country that have a bonsai collection and that have a bonsai collection of this quality and scale. Um, so we have this very unique opportunity to connect our students with these trees in ways that haven't been done before. Uh, you can consider bonsai in almost any discipline, whether it's plant sciences, horticulture, art and design, engineering, um, history, plant pathology, ceramics, uh, considering their pots, um, conservation, history, language. There's all these different things that we can, different ways that we can study bonsai. Uh, and I think that having this collection here is um, a really great chance for us to start looking at bonsai in different ways. Um, a couple of examples. There's a woman out of Temple University who was doing her uh, thesis on uh, plant ethics. And we had a nice chat about how collecting bonsai uh, in the wild for wild material um, out of the Rocky Mountains, say, um, and how training these trees, how that relates to plant ethics, you know, in the big picture. So there's all of these different ways that we can see these trees and learn from these trees, not just, you know, how do you grow them and, and shape them, but, um, you know, can, uh, how can you make new interesting containers? Um, how does social justice impact bonsai? If we're collecting wild trees from, you know, the Rocky Mountains, how does this affect indigenous cultures? Um, so there's lots of interesting ways that we can display trees, that we can learn from trees. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to see how this collection can connect to the university in a much broader sense than just as a museum just as an art piece, you know, more as a learning tool rather than just a, a static collection to be viewed. And so, like I mentioned, we're one of the only research institutions that have a bonsai collection. Um, I think Harvard University, the Arnold Arboretum has a small collection. Um, the Longwood Gardens in uh, Pennsylvania have a collection. There's a couple others. Uh, most collections are in public gardens or private collections, and um, so, like I like I like I said, we are poised to be leaders in this in this area of research and study, um, using these trees as as a way to connect uh, in different different disciplines. Um, and I think. That's it, thanks so much. Um, I'm excited to answer some questions. Uh, we do have a new bonsai website up. You can find us at mbgna.umich.edu. My email is here. Um, so I think we can go ahead and, and open up the questions. So everyone, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question or you can just throw it in the chat um, for Carmen. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, you mentioned all these new plants, trees that are coming in mm -hmm. from the Goldstein, Dr. Goldstein will, yeah. will come in. How are you going to, uh, it seems like a pretty small space you have out there. Mm -hmm. How are you going to display all these new trees? That's a great question. We've been struggling with that ourselves. We've uh, recently added a number of new benches that have to that display area that's about doubled our display space. And we've got a relatively new display space in our conservatory um, that allows us to share about 10 trees. So we can have about 50 trees on display. And that's about right for a collection. You want to have about one third of your trees ready for display at any one time. So at, with another about two thirds kind of set back for um, you know, when, when other trees need to be switched out. So we're ab about at the, the right amount of display space, but it's been a process of um, adding a lot more benches, kind of rethinking how we move through the garden and all of that. Thank you. Yeah, sure.
Well, I have another question then. Oh, sure. Since no one's asking, I thought. <laughs> I, I know you could see on your screen one of the pictures you've shown, but I've also seen in real life that the, the white panels behind the trees, mm -hmm. and then when the sun rises or, or sets late at night, you could see the shadow of the trees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's a tra traditional Japanese technique or is it unique to Matai? Yeah, it's not, <clears throat> um, as far as I know, it's not a traditional Japanese technique. We like to have a kind of a neutral background behind our trees so that you can see the details. If you have a real busy background, it's often lost um, in that background. But I think the benefit of having that background is that you get those really interesting shadows. And I've, I've seen some really fun photography that our, our visitors and volunteers have taken of the space and those, tree, and those shadows. Um, so it's kind of an unexpected benefit of that background. Thank you. Yeah, sure. You're muted, Stephanie. Stephanie, we can't hear you. My apologies, thank you so much. Um, we recently had some new people join um, this virtual talk. And so um, just letting them know that feel free if you have any questions or information, you can go ahead and add it to the chat or um, just go ahead and ask your question. Okay, I don't like silence, so I'm going to talk <laughs> yeah. again. Well, I actually have a question for Carmen. Um, sure. So how is, um, what are the other ways that um, the uh, that Matthias is going to be celebrating um, this 10-year anniversary? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we're doing something really fun. There's going to be a bracket where, so similar to March Madness, where everybody who comes through can kind of participate and look at all of the different trees in our collection and we'll have some kind of rating system and you know kind of pit the trees against each other to see who's the favorite so that'll be really fun um we are uh doing some youth activities um some other public activities throughout the month uh, if you check out our website um they're all they should all be on our calendar um we're going to be actually having a formal naming ceremony for the collection the weekend of uh, June 17th, 18th, and there will actually be a couple of artists in from Japan, as well as an American artist uh, to do some workshops on bonsai. So if you would like to purchase an azalea bonsai um, and learn how to do it, we'll have some of the best uh, azalea artists in the world um, at the gardens for that weekend, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so definitely come check it out. The trees will probably be in peak bloom about that weekend, so mid-June. Uh, we're likely to see the most blooms, but the garden will be open uh, throughout the entire month just to kind of meander through and um, take a look at, you know, what's blooming. Trees will be kind of switched out as needed. Uh, it's a really beautiful space. Wow, thank you so much. I'm going to have to put that weekend yeah. on my calendar. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Anyone else have some questions for Carmen? I did too good of a job keeping it to 15 <laughs> minutes. Are there any days when there are gonna be uh, people like you in the garden to answer questions during this month? Yeah, so I think um, probably the best days will be uh, the weekend. We've got um, our, some of our bonsai caretakers will be out there working on trees. Um, and then likely I think on, uh, so usually I think Tuesdays, Saturdays and Sundays are gonna be your best days to, to run into folks actually out there working on trees. Um, and I know that we're definitely gonna be putting up uh, some signage and some kind of like pop-up information of, of when folks will be working in the garden if there are other times. 
but yeah, if you see any staff members there, uh, do feel free to ask them questions. And if they can't answer it themselves, they'll find somebody there who can. Well, thank you. Um, well, if maybe if there are no other questions or commentary, um, we could always end this talk early. Um, and just to let you know that the Kelsey Museum um, does this every month um, on the first Friday. Um, so you can keep a lookout for um, these talks on our website under our events page. Um, and then also, please. Um, go to the um, Mathai Botanical Gardens website. There's, it seems like there's a lot going on to check out um, ways that you can participate in these events throughout this month and um, view the bonsai collection. Yeah, thank you everybody so much. Appreciate it.